in the most holy name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful, we can never thank God enough for coming in the person of Master Quran Muhammad, to whom all holy praises and thanks are forever due. And whom we can never thank him enough for raising one up from among us, a divine messenger to us all, none other than the most honorable messenger of Allah, the most honorable messenger Elijah Muhammad. And we can never thank Allah enough for raising him up among us, worthy of praise. And we can never thank the most honorable Elijah Muhammad enough for raising one up from his divine spirit alone, one that is the divine constant reminder to us all and the divine warning to all nations. I speak and bear witness to another that I will be there teaching God, Minister Louis Farrakhan. I greet you. All of the listeners that's here, in the green words of peace and paradise of Asaman Lake. Dear brothers and sisters and friends from all walks of life, family, God, I would like to bring to you a very sincere and honest experience that I've had that has happened to me, as we all have had experiences in our lives. But this is something that's very profound, and I think it's imperative that I share it with you at this time. Something that happened to me in the year 1975. However, because of why I'm telling you this, it is that it was stated in 1970 that this experience would take place. And it may sound profound, but please don't cut me off, don't cut this off. It may be something that may be something to think about, to ponder over, and to share. I would offer anyone $10,000 if you did not or disprove what I'm about to share with you of an experience that I have that can have international uh, effect, international ramifications. So please listen and share attention because I'm going to give you and come across information that Incidents is that have been on my mind since 1975 that has happened to me. And you might say, oh man, this guy is all this rock. Well, I thought I was at my point, but we can never underestimate the power of God. So please, let me begin with you. In the year of 1970, I was studying at the University of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Minister Farrakhan came to our university to speak. I was in the cafeteria and a friend of mine from Camden, New Jersey, Bill Warren, he came and said, we saw this sign leading up the steps from the cafeteria. He said, man, Minister Farrakhan, Minister Abdul Khalid Farrakhan, as was stated on his life, is speaking to the student union ballroom at 6 p.m. So we said, man, it's about 6 very now, let's get over there. Here was going on. So we dashed and made a beeline over to the studio in Baldwin. And when we came into the entrance there, one of the brothers ushered me over to the front row seat on the far corner of the front. And Bill was ushered towards the middle, uh, where there was a big bed for him. That was pretty much the seat for baby. So I'm sitting there and very intently listening to him. And I was studying clinical psychobiology at the university. Psychology was the basis of my study. And Mr. Farrakhan, I never forget, he said, psychology is a trickology, you know, and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. So I took a back seat and I said, wow, he's hitting my field of study. But he made sense out of how he addressed it. But let me get to the crux of what I'm here. <clears throat> Someone asked a question, I never forget, a brother in particular, at that time, the Vietnam War was ancient, reaching its climax, and a brother stood up who was a Vietnam vet. And he had his fatigue, so I need to tell. He was on the GI, GI Bill at the university there, and he was studying how to seeking his reality and place in society, as we all are. And the brother stood up and asked Mr. Farrakhan kind of the question, because the minister was in part on the principles of Islam, what the parents bring to the table to us, bring in farmland, banks, schools, hospitals, and all of the wonderful things that we must have in order to build a nation. So the brother said, Brother, uh, Mr. Farrakhan, 
what's going to happen if something happened to the message? And you can tell that this was something that the minister did not really want to think about. And he stepped back from the podium, and he had a white on white in white, and it was good. And he stepped back from the podium, and he took a deep breath, and took a deep thought. And he came, and he came back to the podium, and he said, Brother, I was told to say this. Did someone ask that question? The messenger always prompted him to questions, or to answers the questions in case they came about. The messenger never jumped out on anything on his own from then even from now. So when he came back to the podium, he stated, he said, Brother, I was told this, that a man will come under certain conditions and a certain time. He said, that man who has oriental teachers, his weight will be 177. He will have a godson in the east and a godson in the west. This man will not have a biological child of his own. This man will have a new science of health and medicine to offer. This man would have gone to the east. This man would be a god to us, a knowledge of fitness. So after he elaborated on those things, the God said, he also said that this man would have a friend to come to his aid in that city, in the west, in part of the country, whose first three phone numbers would be 777. He also said that this man would have a God from the East, as I said, and a God from the West. So, this was in 1970s. Well, in that year, I went to the University of Fifth University of Ilyese in Nigeria to 